driving to Ann Arbor. Uh, gonna head to a press conference right here. Uh, figure. I know you kind of see a little bit of it in like the Amazon series type stuff, but kind of show you what kind of goes into the process, not just, you know, the uh, typical what have you. Uh, give you kind of a glimpse of what the whole scenario is once you get down to Schembechler Hall and and that uh, and how the process works. So yeah, check that out. Walking up now to Schembechler Hall where we have our press conference with Josh Gaddis, a couple other guys. It's going to be really exciting. Now in just a mere matter of moments, we'll end up having Michigan offensive coordinator Josh Gaddis as well as a couple of current players right after practice to discuss this new hashtag speed and space offense right here in beautiful Schembechler. What brought you to Michigan? Uh, just my familiarity, um, you know, in the Big Ten, you know, spending four years at Penn State uh, battling against Michigan. Unfortunately, I was on the losing end for, you know, a couple of those games. But uh, my appreciation for this university, what it stands for academically, uh, Coach Harbaugh and, you know, what he's built with this program and, uh, you know, the success that they've had. I mean, very few times are you able to go into a program and take over as an offense coordinator of a winning program. And, you know, um, you're going in not trying to figure out what's, what went wrong, but how you can make it better. So um, that was something that was very intriguing for me when this opportunity came open. Uh, and it was a no-brainer for me. And, I, and I've been really, really happy here. I've been really excited. We've got a great staff, and I couldn't be more fortunate to be here. All right, we got Coach Daniels. Hello, all. Hello. Coach, talk about your new role. Um, I'm excited to coach quarterbacks at, at Michigan. Um, if you coach quarterbacks anywhere in this country um, in college football, um, Michigan's certainly at the top of the list, and I'm, I'm pretty fortunate and, and uh, really excited to do that. So how different is it with, with Josh Gaddis? Yeah, it's a lot different. Uh, completely new offense, you know, so got to start from square one again, uh, learning all, you know, the new names for concepts and all the new procedures we have on offense. So, uh, you know, it's a little bit of a learning curve, but I think guys are picking it up fast. It's good to see you guys again. <laughs> <laughs> so sincere. So we've asked everybody, how is it different with Josh Gaddis? Yeah, he brings, uh, you know, um, different ideas uh, um, to our offense. And, you know, from the O-line perspective, it's, you know, a touch different from what we've been doing. But, um, you know, we're excited with, with the changes. I think that we're going to be, uh, you know, a tough unit to stop. Well, that was that. Uh, got a, several questions in. Uh, asked Josh Gaddis a little bit about the offense. Yeah, who kind of embodies that speed and space type idea? Yeah, you know, it, it's not necessarily a certain style of player. It's really the schematic things that we're able to do on offense, you know, being able to put the defense in conflict from a number of different ways, you know, having first level reads, second level read, third level reads, um, you know, so being active from that standpoint, especially in the quarterback read, run game, RPO game, you know, whatever, you know, we need to do to be aggressive uh, to create numbers and angles for our offensive linemen so they're blocking clean blocks uh, and creates open space and, and gets our athletes out in space. But uh, we do, you know, we, you know, when you look at uh, the number of athletes Athletes we have on offense, I think we're very versatile. Um, you know, we have you know a lot of depth at tight end. We have you know we need to get a little bit more depth at receiver, um, but we got to continue to to get those skill guys better. You know, um, you know we're not just patting ourselves on the back. We're not ready yet. You know, we still have a long way to go um, in every you know area that we need to improve. But uh, you know, we've got the skill. We've got the guys all around it. And one of the things that we really have is an offensive line to really drive our offense. You know, I would say that's the strength of our offense right now. And so, uh, you know, those guys have been practicing great over the first three days. Um, we also have good talented quarterbacks. So, um, you know, overall, we feel really good about the depth we have on offense. More interesting things from some of the players. Uh, for instance, uh, hearing about this shirt that Jim Harbaugh gave out. Coach Harbaugh gave us some shirts the other day um, with the co Big East champs on the front and then uh, all the scores of the games we lost on the back. So uh, I took that shirt and hung it up in the tight end room with the scores. 
just just a reminder, uh, you know how this how the season ended, and we don't, we don't want to do that again. Obviously, you never want to lose the last game of the year, and everybody here knows what the Ohio State game means to us, to them, to both of our fan bases. So, um, and you know, losing those games and the manner that we lost them, it just yeah, it really really sucks, and it's something you were we were thinking about every single day. Does he want you wearing those shirts? <laughs> I've seen some guys wear them, but. Uh, you know, I, I just like looking at it in the meeting room, just a reminder, you know, what, we, what we're grinding for, what we're working for, and that's, you know, beat Ohio State and win the big time. Yeah, mine's at the bottom of my locker. <laughs> Buried? Yeah. That's not coming out. I, I remember all of them, so we're good. Just how scary might it be for uh, Ben Mason to be a defensive lineman? Player, would you expect him to be, and is that kind of a terrifying prospect? Considering his... <laughs> I haven't gone up against him yet, but uh, kind of like a more muscular chase. <laughs> I would, I would kind of compare him that way. Uh, you know, he'll get the hang of it. I don't think he's got it all down 100% yet, but you know, hopefully by the end of spring, uh, he'll, he'll have it down. Once that ends, then I got to get video up, and then I got to go right, and that's going to be the rest of my night, and it. A lot goes into all of it. So I normally find a coffee shop or a cigar shop uh, to work at. I've been smoking cigars lately, so I'm at a Starbucks right now in Ann Arbor. And you can kind of see I'm transcribing right now and cutting video at the same exact time. See? All right, so uh, that was it. Uh, I got four stories up. I'm driving home now. It's almost midnight. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, I normally try to get up a little bit more than four stories, but, uh, that's the best I could really do today. Uh, I was on the phone with some people trying to, which I couldn't, since I use my phone to, uh, videotape stuff, I couldn't exactly show you what it was like with me being on the phone, but I had some some sourcing, some different stuff behind the scenes going on and uh, whatever, but got uh, four stories up from the uh, the media availability and gonna work on more tomorrow. And uh, that's, uh, that's a day in the life.